Good afternoon to all. Ms. Laura John, Program Officer, GGGI. Mr. Dennis Daswani, Communications, GGGI. Green Pioneers Program Participant, Mentors of the GGGI Green Pioneers Program. Pastor Yanwick Joseph, Joyfield Ministry. Mr. Kemuel Jambatis, Deputy Director of Agricultural Services. Mrs. Roycelyn Howell, Senior Business Development Officer at the Small Business Development Center, Ministry of Commerce. Mr. Daniel Flores of Eco Carib Inc. Green Pioneers participants online in the OECS. Lapo Kabwit Drum Assembly here with us, specially invited guests. Eco Creations team, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end of program showcase of the GGI program. Um, green entrepreneurship, Green Premier, is pivoted on the fulcrum of environmental and social well being and its positive practices and impacts in relation to organizational best practices regionally and globally. In the green space, practitioners, leaders, and activists in their sphere of influence must of necessity exercise cautious responsibility in balancing their business financial performance with its environmental and social impact. The green enterprise space is governed by the conscience of social acceptability, environmental soundness, and economic feasibility, people, planet, and profit. Organizational waste, in terms of reducing organizational waste, maximizing energy consumption, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and in the process, lower your operational costs, enhancing your corporate reputation, and attracting new customers and investors who value sustainability. Throughout the Green Premier's program, participants learned all this and more, and grasped concepts and ideas that I am sure have assisted in transforming the various enterprises. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the OECS Green Growth Global Institute End of Program Showcase. And it's wonderful to have you. And as we continue the program, it's my pleasure to call on Ms. Laura John to give her remarks. Put your hands together. My, my apologies, we start with the prayers. <laughs> Let me call on Pastor Yanrik. Good afternoon to all. Protocol observed, and I would I'd like to welcome everyone. Holy Spirit, we just invite uh, your presence into our midst, and I just surrender this program here to you this afternoon. My scripture today is taken from Matthew 15, verse 14 through 30. And it's the parable of the gold bars. And that's where this rich man was going on vacation. And he called his servants in. And to one he gave five gifts, five gold bars. To the other one he gave two gold bars, which is a gift. And to the other one, he gave one, and he left. When he came back, he called them in to see what they had done with the gifts he had given them. The one who had given, he had given five said, Master, here, five more. The one he had given two, Master, here, I have two more. The one he had given one said, Master, you are a hard man, you are a shrewd man. I feared you, so I went to hide that one. He wasn't pleased. Two of them were blessed. All three were blessed with gifts. But what did they do with the gifts? I want to tell you the recipients today who are entrepreneurs. My understanding is that that's an entrepreneurship course. That you are not lucky. 
Many people call themselves lucky, but you are not lucky. You have been blessed with this program, which is going to enhance your skills to become entrepreneurs. Every good thing, every good gift comes from God. And you need to recognize what you have been blessed with and take the, uh, take the advice of the first two. They multiplied their gifts. They didn't go and take it and hide it. You are a blessing unto this nation. You have been blessed. You have a purpose in this nation. God created you for a purpose, his purpose, his will. Today, in history, you are being recognized. But God recognized you even, if, even before you were born for a day like this. And I need you to remember daily what God is going to do in your life, what he has done so far. Do not forget Every gift you have came from God. Always put him first. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, He's promised to give you prosperity, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And take Matthew 15, 14 to 30, and Jeremiah 29, 11, as your watchwords. The Lord created you to bless you. Do not look at what, if you look at what's going around you in St. Lucia, you will be depressed. Do not get fearful. Get prayerful. Pray. And trust that God knows what he's doing with you. You have been called for a time like this. Rise up in the Lord and trust the gifts he has given to you. You are a blessing and be a blessing unto someone. Amen? Amen? Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for bringing these young people here today, Father, to bless them, to nurture them. Father, I surrender each and every one to you. Father, let not them be fearful, but allow them to be prayerful. Let them not be fearful, Lord, but them, let them rise up in faith. Give them faith to walk the journey you've given them. Let them be an example unto others. Let them rise and shine. Let them not forget who you've called them to be this day and father let lead each one into your presence lead them not into temptation but be, deliver them from evil and let them be rising stars in saint lucia as they become future leaders of this generation and increase them spiritually and give them wisdom knowledge and understanding in jesus mighty name we pray Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. We now call on the St. Joseph Convent to lead us in the national anthem.
Thank you, St. Joseph Convent, and uh, so, so you, most of you may be aware or may not be aware that St. Joseph Convent is celebrating 170 years. So a round of applause to St. Joseph Convent for 100 and, 170 years of education. And so ladies and gentlemen, to add some vibrations to the celebrations, we call on Lafo Kabwit to serenade us with a little drum.
Let's talk a bit, ladies and gentlemen. Serenade is us. Let me recognize the, some of our invited guests. We have Mr. David Headley. Give him a round of applause as well. We have from GGGI, Mr. Andrew Lewis and Miss Melody Dixon. Give them a round of applause as well. Nice to have you with us today. So let me call to address us and to give us the program overview, Ms. Laura John, Program Officer of GGGI. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander. Uh, adopting the protocol previously established. My name is Laura John. I am the program officer for the Eastern Caribbean Green Entrepreneurship Initiative with the Global Green Growth Institute. A pleasant good afternoon to all of our esteemed guests. For many of you who have been on this journey with GGGI for the last three years, specifically as part of the Eastern Caribbean Green Entrepreneurship Initiative, much of what I have to say today will be quite repetitive. Um, but as, the, as one of the final events that we are having as we um, seek to close the project, it would be remiss of me not to provide an overview of the, pro the program itself, all of what we have accomplished, um, and all of our greenpreneurs and various stakeholders who have truly participated in making this program a success. For many of you who may not know, GGGI or the Global Green Growth Institute is an international and intergovernmental organization based in South Korea, Seoul, and was established in 2012 at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development. One of our goals or our vision is really to create a low carbon, resilient, strong and inclusive economy, or I should say economies, um, for our various member countries. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OACS Commission, is actually our only regional body that is um, currently a member of GGGI. And it was through this partnership that we actually established our Caribbean office um, in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are embedded in the OACS Commission um, here in St. Lucia. So our team, most of our team anyways, are actually based in St. Lucia. Specifically under GGI's um, mandate for the Caribbean, we established the Eastern Caribbean Green Entrepreneurship Initiative with funding from the Qatar Fund for, for Development, our donor, and of course in partnership with the OECS Commission. This EC Greenpreneurs, as we call it for short, program to support MSMEs in six member countries, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Kitts and Nevis. Why MSMEs? Globally, they represent 70% of employers and contribute, and this number is even far greater in developing countries like our small island developing states like St. Lucia. Um, it can get as high as being responsible for 90% of employment in our countries. And so therefore, they play a critical role in our development in our growth, in supporting the sustainable livelihoods of our people. Through this project, we sought to support these MSMEs, but specifically green MSMEs. So what's the difference? Green entrepreneurs or green businesses, we define them as purpose-driven. They, they seek to address environmental and social issues, whether it's in their communities, their countries, their region, or globally. 
and they do so through the, pro through the products and services that they provide, but also through the initiatives that they implement to safeguard their own operations, ensuring that they are in line with various sustainability principles. For example, they may implement rainwater harvesting systems um, to ensure water conservation. They may employ sustainable waste management solutions, recycling materials as much as possible. They may utilize renewable energy such as solar um, to electrify their facilities. So there are a number of ways in which these green businesses are really supporting sustainable development for our countries. So this program was specifically designed to support them. And I'm happy to say that in St. Lucia and in the six participating countries, we had many green businesses um, apply to our various programs. There were three main components of the Eastern Caribbean um, Green Entrepreneurship Initiative. An incubator program that sought to support uh, early stage businesses or entrepreneurs with green ideas and looking to really build those ideas out and create uh, a green business. And we received over 300 applications for our incubator program. We ran three cycles of this and of the 56 um, businesses or teams that participated, they had the opportunity to go through very rigorous 12 week training where they attended weekly webinars going through um, our social lean canvas methodology. They learned modules on sustainability principles for the Eastern Caribbean. They learned modules on impact modeling, on financial modeling, on learning how to pitch their business and storytell, on learning design systems. So it was a very intense 12 week um, program where we, the aim was to build their capacity uh, and put them, get them through those initial stages of their business development. They were also supported with mentors and coaches and networking opportunities. And all of this culminated in a business plan competition where they had the opportunity to secure seed grants of 10,000 US each. We were able to award 30 teams with such grants, representing a total value of 300,000 US that was invested in our early stage um, green businesses in the region. Of this, St. Lucia actually captured five of these seed grants, so representing 50,000 US. In addition, we had our accelerator program. This focused more on investment readiness. So moving from the early stage and supporting businesses that are getting ready to scale and grow. And our offerings were slightly different. A little less focus on capacity building, although we did have master classes on disaster preparedness and planning, as well as strategic thinking and strategic planning. Um, but the highlight was really the opportunity for these businesses to access interest-free loans or repayable grants of up to 50,000 US. So significant funding um, that was interest-free and really had minimal restrictions on what that financing could be used for. And the reason this was designed in this way is because we recognize that accessing financing is one of the preeminent challenges that small businesses fail um, experience, especially in 
developing country contexts and even more so in small island developing states where there are even less opportunities. And I'm happy to share with you that we received 96 applications for these interest-free loans and we're able to grant or award 29 interest-free loans representing just under 1 million US in funding. So again, another investment into the region. Um, of this, St. Lucia captured four of the interest-free loans. Uh, we have not officially announced the recipients as yet, um, but we will be doing so in the coming weeks. So we're just very excited that we were able to, in total, invest 1.2 million US in these six member countries, um, supporting specifically these green businesses. So although our program is coming to an end, um, we have many successes uh, that speak to the need for more programs like the Greenpreneurs program um, that really supports our entrepreneurs and specifically green entrepreneurs. Um, because I think in the age of this climate crisis that I think is the preeminent um, crisis of our generation, as small island develop developing states, we are at the forefront of experiencing the negative impacts of climate change from increased environmental hazards, um, increasing intensity of storms. We've already been experiencing this. And so it is critical that we support the businesses that are actually on the front lines doing transformational and innovative things to truly um, push us in the right direction in terms of moving, addressing this climate change um, crisis. So we're very grateful to the Qatar Fund for Development for their support through the funding of this program. Um, I also have to say a big thank you to our regional facilitator, um, Janice Henderson, uh, based in Antigua, who was actually the facilitator for the second and third cycle of our incubator program, along with the mentors and coaches who supported our greenpreneurs as they went through the various um, stages of the incubator program in particular. We could not have done it without all of your support. Some of the mentors and coaches are um, business professionals, public servants from St. Lucia, but as well from all the other participating countries uh, and lent their support whenever we called on them. Um, so we are truly grateful for the time that they volunteered and gave to our entrepreneurs because it was often to the benefit of the entrepreneurs to get the live, um, real life experience, knowledge, expertise of these professionals. In addition, specifically for the um, incubator program, the weekly webinars included presentations by guest speakers and I think for many of our greenpreneurs, this was also a highlight. Uh, Mr. Florius, who's with us here, was one such speaker. Um, and the feedback we received from the greenpreneurs after every webinar always hailed their appreciation for the guest speakers to really help them better understand all of this theoretical material that they were getting. Um, so that they could be better positioned to put that into practice. So, again, I think given that we are um, coming to a close for the program, we have to acknowledge um, the contributions of so many who made this program a success, uh, including our own GGI staff, um, while 
Many are familiar with me because I was often the face in um, interacting with all the different stakeholders, participants. Um, I facilitated the very first cycle of our incubator program. There were tireless staff working in the background supporting me. Uh, many of you may remember Daria Poyat. She was formerly with GGI up until December. Um, she was also very well known by all of our stakeholders. Um, we have Dinesh Daswani, our communications lead, who in the one year since he's come on board has really helped increase the visibility of our program and of GGI in the region. Um, we have Stephanie Matthew, who is our monitoring and evaluation and learning associate. She has been um, hands-on in terms of collecting all of the data that is so critical for us um, to gather from this program so that we really have quantitative metrics of our impact through this Greenpreneurs program and can speak um, very confidently just as I showed you with the numbers showing um, just what our impact looked like uh, through this program. We also have our OECS counterparts, um, Kwesi Roberts, who is the technical specialist with the Competitive Business Unit. He's been our point of contact with the OECS and supported by Pearl Joseph, who is the program assistant with the CBU. So, if I've left anyone out, I do apologize. Um, but do, these are just some of the people who have actively been working together in the background um, on this Greenpreneurs program. And I think for the remainder of today's session, what I'm really excited about is actually hearing testimonials from, I believe, our mentors and some of our Greenpreneurs on their own experience so that they can tell you, in their own words, um, what the Greenpreneurs program meant to them. So on that note, I would end here and say thank you. And that's it. <laughs>
to go on to do my degree, to do a master's degree, and here I am today. So I would like to say a special thank you to Mrs. Paul that just a few words and a smile, the same smile you see here, was sufficient to motivate me to forget about the salary for two years in the first instance and later on for many, many moons in pursuit of an education that today and into the future is going to reap huge amounts of benefit for myself, my family, and perhaps my country and the rest of the world. Will you show some appreciation? She's one of the mentors on this program. So I'd like to express my heartfelt thank you uh, to Mrs. Rufina Paul. Entrepreneurship, green preneurs. Entrepreneurship is the ability and the readiness to develop, organize, and run a business enterprise along with all of its uncertainties in order to make a profit. Don't forget that little word, profit. In economics, entrepreneurship connected with, is connected with land, labor, natural resources, and capital, and it is designed to, again, generate profit. The entrepreneurial vision is, is defined sorry, by discovery, risk-taking, and is an indispensable part of a nation's capacity to succeed in an ever-changing and more competitive global marketplace. The entrepreneur is defined as someone who has the ability and desire to establish, administer, and succeed in a startup venture, along with risk entitled to it to make profits. Two things I want you to remember. This person has the ability, but is not only driven by ability, but there is a desire that motivates that into business pursuits. In sum, ent entrepreneurship is the process of starting and developing a company with the aim of delivering something new or improved to the market or by organizing the means of production in a superior or new and improved way. This process is principally organized through the formation of a startup company managed by the entrepreneurs, often under considerable personal and financial risk, and is temporary in duration as a phase in the business life cycle. A key distinction between startups and other small or young business is an aspiration, whether it's realized or not, to sustainably grow. As companies mature out of the startup phase, they evolve into sustainable businesses, are acquired or sold to public investors, or they may decay and may eventually shut down as new companies start up and take their place. It is into this conceptual framework that the Global Green Growth Institute, the GGGI, in partnership with the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, the Carter Fund for Development, seeks to thrust aspiring aspiring and enterprising entrepreneurs from select Caribbean territories, supporting the pursuit of fulfillment of their ambitions. St. Lucia, a small island developing state, as we are popularly, popularly call SIDS, welcomes the opportunity to partner with these agencies in harnessing regional and global expertise and affording local entrepreneurs global insights into strategically conceptualizing, developing, and scaling up the business ideas. When the term greenpreneurs emerged when I first came across it, it seemed like a move to create a trendy concept to attract a certain caliber of enterprising individuals. You know, in agriculture, we say, let's make agriculture sexy. I don't know what that means after so many years of being in the sector. I have no idea what that means. However, upon further engagement with the concept and the work of the Eastern Caribbean Green Entrepreneurship Initiative, Greenpreneurs, it is clear that greenpreneurship offers more than just a trending ideology, but more importantly, a platform for sustainable business growth and development. The incubator, accelerator, and mentorship components of this program are essential ingredients in shaping the mind of the young entrepreneurs to remain focused, steadfast, and committed. I want you to remember that word, committed. For those of you who recently been viewing uh, Gran Turismo, one of the things that came out from that particular movie is when you decide to overtake, you have to commit to it. When you put your mind, your talents, your treasure into a business, you must commit every aspect of your existence if you're going to see that through to success. Make no mistake, insurmountable effort may be offered to the emerging business individual 
whether externally or from other sources, but it takes brute force effort and devotion to stay the course through its forming, storming, norming, and performing stages and emerge a successful venture. I reckon that each one of the participants here today or those that are listed in the brochure has had some measure of difficulty and moments of elation during that startup time. You will go through a lot more of these experiences during the course of the development of your business enterprise. In those moments, remind yourself why you chose that particular path and stay intrinsically motivated to see the process through to successful outcomes. The overarching objectives of the GGGI should be kept in the forefront of your minds when striving for excellence. Climate actions towards strengthening policy, making communities and cities more sustainable, live, livable, and resilient, achieving a sustainable and circular bioeconomy, and accelerating poverty eradication and gender equality should always be in the forefront of your mind as you seek not only your personal gains, but that of national growth and development. Each one of the greenpreneurs here today must aspire to contribute to these overarching principles as we pursue a more sustainable business environment focused on enhancing productivity, efficiency, while remaining viable and sustainable. I take a moment to digress to help you get an appreciation of the immense investments that governments across countries, but more specifically in our St. Lucia, has made over the years. And I'm going to use one that I'm familiar with in the agricultural sector to help you to appreciate that if when resources are made available to you, it requires that you commit to making it successful. The Kingdom of Morocco has a project, a program that is called the Green Morocco Project. In this particular project, the government goes in and puts in infrastructure and provides land space for the production of primary agricultural produce. That project came about because they were losing productivity and efficiency in the production of wheat and grains. So they decided to diversify into fresh vegetables and very specifically citrus. St. Lucia visited Morocco and in partnership with Morocco and providing technical support services, we coined what was called the Youth Agri-Entrepreneurial Project, or short YEP. That particular project sought to establish young agricultural entrepreneurs to produce very specifically primary products. We're talking about meat, whether chicken or cattle or sheep, whatever, and fresh produce. And so these young entrepreneurs were given land space, access to land space. They were given access to housing resources or housing infrastructure for the livestock greenhouse infrastructure for the crops. Fast forward 10 years, 15 years down the road, these greenhouses 100% are uncovered. Fast forward to the same time, the livestock pens, some are doing really well, some are somewhere between well and not so well. However, there's one youngster who stood out, and today he's running about 5,000 layer birds. Last week he called me, he told me he had 2,000 dozen eggs and he was trying to dispose of it. So here we were making the investments, but the market space had its own challenges. But because of his commitment, he was able to creatively find buyers for these 2,000 dozens of eggs. Do you understand that 2,000 dozen eggs represents $20,000? I hope you're aware of that. When purchased at the massive stores at $10. And so I'm saying all this to say that there are going to be many entrants or many entrants into the business environment, but only those who are determined and who are going to take not just the external investments, like you noted, so many persons are getting this money. I'm really wondering what they're going to be doing with it. I recognize some of the names because they have applied for concessions at the Ministry of Agriculture. And bravo to them. We're going to make those concessions available. But it has to go beyond just the injection of external funds. Years ago in, 2000, in, 19, no, in 2007, when I started a small farm, borrowed $5,000 from Scotiabank then, put in about $5,000 of shoulder grease, 
and a little help from a few friends, started a small farm business. Fast forward to 2024, it's still up and running, has produced thousands of pounds of fresh fruit, vegetables that some of you have consumed from Massey stores or the hotels that you visit, Coconut Bee and wherever else. What it has taken is that you see the difficulties. When Thomas came, we had to deal with it. When December 2013 trough came, we had to deal with it. When, when, when Storm Brett recently came, we had to deal with it. You lose, you lose investments, you lose crops. Could you imagine when COVID-19 came, I had about 12,000 pounds of cantaloupes, honeydew, and watermelons piled up, and nobody was buying. The hotels were shut down, and the pile was this high. I got pictures to show, and nobody was buying. And you get up a year later, two years later, when these hotels open, you get back into business, and you carry on with the affairs of your business. Let me remind our entrepreneurs today, our greenpreneurs today, to each one his own. There are some business enterprises that are glamorous. It calls you to dress up, to make up, to deck up, to walk the part, to talk the part. It's all about show and intellect. There are some that are not so glamorous. So you see why I'm telling you about this making agriculture sexy story? <laughs> see, agriculture is multifaceted. Primary agriculture has nothing sexy to it. I'm just, I just want you to know that. Somebody has to prepare the land. And somebody or some machine has to put the seedling into the ground. I, you tell me how you're going to put the seedling into the ground without using your hands in some gloves or something. Somebody has to bend over to harvest the crop. That's backbreaking. You tell me what you want on the 35 degree sunlight in Del Seshozel or Marquis Estate, it's hard work. But it is rewarding work. Do not waste your time trying to compare yourself with the guy who's driving around, who's offering a service that requires intellect, or he's offering a service that requires computer repairs, and say, boy, me and his hard work, we done. No, sir. Stay the course. Now, here is the thing that I want you to pay attention to, to each one his own. You see these young ladies in blue? Some of you are going to rise up to be some amazing people in your own field that requires dressing up, sprucing up. And some are going to be amazing in other fields that does not appear so attractive. But guess what? The beneficiaries of the service or the products that you offer are going to be grateful that you are remaining consistent, that you are offering them quality, and that you are devoted to that process. When you look at a business like transportation services, in the St. Lucia context with few electric cars, how do you make it green? When you look at services of tractor, tractoring for a farm, for example, how do you make it green? The tractor uses diesel, it's messy. And so when we talk about green printers, this is about ensuring that there is integrity in terms of what you do. Integrity of process, integrity of commitment, integrity of the product that is being offered to your consumers to assure them that you have gone through a process where you have undertaken fair practices, your laborers are paid a fair wage, and you are looking forward to making your contributions to environmental sustainability and ensuring that you are environmentally friendly. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of St. Lucia, the Ministry of Agriculture, indeed applauds the work of the Sustainable Development Department and other agencies that have come together to offer these services. And like I said to you, I have seen at least three of those names in terms of applications for concession. And so in the frame of each one his own, remind yourself that when you're going to build your business, that you build it with integrity, integrity of process and product. You're going to build it on fairness. You're going to build it on social and environmental responsibility. One th final thought as we move forward. Just this week, we had a meeting, and the word innovation showed up. You know, after so long of using the word innovation, it is still a really sad, un uh, poorly understood word. It's like love. It's, it's pretty much like love. You know, you hear, you hear us administrators talk about we're looking forward to innovation. You hear our, 
our policymakers, the, the politicians talk about it, you know, innovation, innovation, innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, youngsters in the room, as you grow and develop and as time elapses, processes will change, products will need to be improved, people will be looking for something novel, for something different. This is what innovation is all about. If you are familiar with the Bible, there's a scripture that says there's nothing brand new under the sun. And that is an all true statement. However, innovators are those persons who see the challenges and come up with creative ideas to offer something that is different, something that is, that is seemingly novel, that is attractive to consumers. Innovators are those persons who look at a product and say, how can I improve it? Innovators are those who look at a service and say, how can I make it more efficient? How could I reduce losses? How can I reduce waste? Innovators who are those who walk onto the farms and see post-harvest losses and say, how do I reduce those post-harvest losses? Are those who walk onto the supermarket shelves and see produce that, that's not properly processed, and so you see some rotten apples and some rotten pears, and I'm trying to wonder why they keep them on the shelf, but it's one of the story. And say, how could we do things differently to ensure that we minimize food waste, food loss, and that sort of stuff. And so as we move forward and seek to maintain the green in entrepreneurship, these are some of the thoughts that I would like, to keep you like, I would like for you to keep in your mind. How could we enhance efficiency, reduce losses, and above all, keep profitability somewhere in the mix and personal satisfaction? I have seen people in profitable businesses, but they're not satisfied, they're not contented. And so all of these come together and converge and help to determine whether you are going to be successful in your pursuits. As a representative of the Ministry of Agriculture, I would like to reiterate our commitment to supporting those green printers who are going to come to us for support in moving forward. Let me again remind you that there's a huge amount of external support but do not be carried away with it and do not allow it to distract you from maintaining focus on what is important, ensuring that your pursuits are one that is successful. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where people have this entitlement mentality because government offers all these safety net programs. Do not be hoodwinked by safety net programs. Remind yourself that when I'm challenged by risk, when I'm challenged by failure, that I'm gonna fall forward. If this business falls for whatever reason, I'm gonna allow it to fall forward so when I get up, I am a little further up front than when I actually stop. And so with these few words, I'd like to thank the organizers of this program and also to thank the GGGI and other agencies for welcoming the ministry to partner with, uh, with you on, the, on, on these initiatives. I'll be looking forward to hearing the testimonials of the successful businesses that are already rolled out, but that are going to grow to become major enterprises, providing services, products to our nation and to our people. With this, I say thank you very much. Very profound, thought-provoking um, presentation. Amidst there, there were some issues in terms of motivating you as well. It reminds me um, of one of my favorite quotes. I saw a little bit of Martin Luther King in there, that the true measure of a person is not where you stand in time of comfort and luxury, but where you stand in times of difficulty, challenges, and adversity. And entrepreneurship will bring up some of those things. So to stay on course, to stay, maintain the integrity, and the quality is critical. A round of applause again for our keynote speaker, Mr. Samuel, Mr. Kimwell Jabatis. Let me call on Ms. Roislyn Howell from the Small Business Development um, Center, the Small Biz Senior Business Development Officer, to share some remarks with us. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Protocol having been established. I wish to extend um, regards on behalf of our director at the SBDC. This afternoon, we've heard some very thought-provoking messages. 
And I am here not only to speak on behalf of the SBDT, SBDC, but to underscore our government, the government of St. Lucia's efforts and commitment. This afternoon, I want to stress that the policy positions of a government towards greening and climate resilience extend to our partners in trade and industry throughout. And I'm happy that the representative from agriculture spoke so vociferously on the support that is already being given to agriculture and towards entrepreneurship. Our obligation to these initiatives aligns with the global efforts that help to promote sustainable development, exemplifying our dedication to creating a greener and more resilient future for our nation. And I want to stress, even this morning when we were at a meeting discussing some of our processes, we were addressing a matter which is now um, one of our pet projects to support entrepreneurs um, for what we call the MSME loan grant facility, which is geared towards also providing support to our MSME sector. While we were at the discussion, we ourselves were grappling with issues of sustainability, and let me explain what I mean. When we spoke about creating a process that was seamless, one of the challenges that rose, arose was the idea of becoming more digitalized, moving away from paper. Because what we have been asking for submissions of application on paper now has to be in a form that we can now say we can help our planet. And that's the reality that we are now faced with. So we can't just be speaking towards the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs transitioning, but also our position within the government, creating that kind of environment which also supports sustainable futures. So as we navigate those challenges, you know, the government of St. Lucia recognizes the urgency of adapting and adopting sustainable practices not just for the MSME sector, but within the government itself, the government services. We recognize the devastating impacts of climate change, which are felt worldwide, and its responsibility, our responsibility to, our, to mitigate those efforts and build resilience in our communities. In collaboration with those partners such as Global Green Growth Institute, and the OECS, under this initiative, we are encouraged to develop and implement policies that prioritize green initiatives and climate resilience strategies. These partnerships highlight our commitment to working collectively on a regional and global scale to address the pressing issues of climate change. And at the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, we find ourselves in the unique position also of transitioning to adapt and help our clients adopt green entrepreneurship at the forefront of the initiative to build their businesses and make money, which is a fundamental thing when you get into business. And so here we are trying to foster a business community, create that business community which will now introduce and embrace sustainable practices, help reduce the carbon footprint, and contribute to the broader, broader, broader goal of achieving green growth. The GGI, GGI has been instrumental in providing technical expertise and guidance in the advancement of the promotion of green practices among MSMEs, by leveraging the expertise that we've provided, we have at least 10 or 11, 11 local entrepreneurs, which we are very happy to see on the brochure, some of whom we work very closely with, are now better equipped through funds that they have received under the OECS Greenpreneurs Project. They are now better equipped to design, implement, and implement sustainable practices within their businesses and that is not only to the benefit of the bottom line, but to encourage the environment, the, the development of the environment sustainable practices. And so we are, wish to commend those 11 entrepreneurs highlighted here and encourage that they um, remain con 
committed, and here again the word commitment comes in, to the practices that will help preserve our planet and our people. Further, we can also state that at the SBDC, we have had the privilege of receiving training under the same projects and being part of certain discussions for strategic alignments with the other, other BSOs around the region. Certainly, the SBDC recognizes the, res the relevance of an integrated approach to achieve needed promotion and transformation of MSMEs towards climate resilience and greening practices. And when we speak of integration, this is where we encourage networking, networking among partner ministries, partner agencies, so that this process does not remain a burden only of the MSMEs, but that our agencies can come together and form those synergies that can support our entrepreneurs in meaningful, tangible ways. So our collaboration now under this project, we, we are very happy to have been part of it. And through the project, the SBDC recognizes the support, mentorship, and resources which were given to our entrepreneurs which now enables them to transform their ideas into successful, environmentally conscious businesses. In conclusion, as an agent of the state and representing the Ministry of Commerce in particular, we remain steadfast in our commitment to supporting the green initiatives in trade and industry and in entrepreneurship. And through the partnerships that have already been forged, we feel confident that our ability to create sustainable, resilient, a resilient future foundation remains a reality. Together, we can build an economy that not only thrives, but also preserves the beauty of this natural, beautiful landscape that is our homeland, St. Lucia. And we want this for generations to come. So let me thank you for giving me this opportunity and wish all of you the very best as you continue forging forward with your projects. Thank you very much, Mrs. Howell, for your inspiring and positive message of encouragement. Now we're going to share some experiences from the Green Premiers program let me just tell you that one of the individuals, participants, who are supposed to be here with us today, and let me see how I can put this, is experiencing a trauma in her buccal cavity. <laughs> so the technical term for this is odentalgia, which is the dentist's way of saying a toothache. Okay, so Miss Bernice Blanchard will not be able to join us today because she experienced that. So let me call on Mrs. Rufina Paul, one of the mentors, to share some experiences with us. Put your hands together for Mrs. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, protocol having been established, let me just say um, it's indeed a pleasure to be here to share the experiences that we've had. Um, Mr. Javatis, <laughs> you took me by surprise, but um, I wasn't aware at the time of what the impact was, but I must say my days made, I mean, you know, I can die now. At least one person <laughs> was impacted by something I said. Okay, so I think... And just watching you and listening to you as an elder person <laughs> or older person, I think, you know, we can say, okay, we did something. Although agriculture-wise, um, we're not happy with the legacy that seems to be plaguing us, really and truly. Um, but moving forward, let me just deal with the business of today. Um, I was asked to be a mentor um, with the GTGI project. Initially, with so much happening, I said, mm, really? But then we made time. I made time to get it done. And then when we did get the partnerships done, 
I was partnered with somebody who's my colleague, Jennifer Maynard, who is into agriculture. And I'm saying, what can I tell Jennifer? <laughs> what can I teach her really and tell your mentor about um, in terms of what she was venturing into? Um, but the Green Premier Mentorship Program, we were matched and it provided us with an opportunity for us to support each other. It was really a learning and an exchange among two adults experiencing agriculture, but we learned from each other. And um, we started off with the guidance of the GGGI office in um, the Mentorship Code of Conduct and Expectations Worksheet. We had to be clear what it is that we were going to do and how we were going to make that happen. And interestingly, we signed on to that um, Code of Conduct and um, Expectation Worksheet in November 2021. Um, the, the experience was one of learning and where both of us as, as mentor and mentee, we collaborated and, we, and I for sure got to understand better the intricacies of her particular enterprise, which was microgreens. Um, and I did some reading on my own to just understand it better. So GGGI really encouraged us as mentors and mentees to use the worksheet to create an agreement that established a framework for success. And the frequency of our communication had to be established how often we're going to be seeing each other. And um, we also agreed on what our communication was going to be through, whether it's WhatsApp or Zoom or whatever. And um, we collaborated, it started off in January of 2022, um, the 8th of January to be exact, because I had to go back to my archives to see what the process was. And interestingly, I got through where we had to, at the end of it all, which was really 20th of February, which was my birthday in 2022, when we signed off on what we had actually done. And um, when I looked at it we, in January the 8th, we did um, a session looking at organizational values, what exactly was going to be our engagement. Um, on, February, on January 18th, sorry, 17th, we looked at the pitch and the organizational values. We also looked at the pitch again on January 19th. Um, we looked at the survey, that instrument that she had developed to do her market survey. Um, and we looked at the financial model, various things really. Overall, maybe 10 to 12 hours of interaction over the time period in about 10 engagements, so to speak. And so when we set off to get it all done, we had to also, based on the guidance given from the GGI office, um, what was going to be her goals with having my goals. Um, as a mentee, her goals were getting help in finding startup grants, help with the Lean Canvas um, um, platform, and also fine-tuning her technical processes. My goals as mentor was one where I wanted to apply logical thinking. Um, based on my background, logic is what guides me. It has to be logical for us to proceed. If I can't, well, we will need to get that through. Um, also, I've learned over the years to become an active listener. So active listening to what exactly was her mission and what she wanted to achieve and exchanging experiences and best practices in terms of what I could have offered her. Not from a microgreens perspective, but from a general experiences of life. And also, my goal as well was one of having effective collaboration in the design of a transformative green business model. So we agreed in our goals, we signed it off and everything else. Um, so as regard the achievement of the goals, we agreed to have clear communication and also of being open to learning and receiving feedback. And I think as two mature adults, we did that. When I was asked by Mr. Alexander to share our experiences, I called her and asked her, how are you doing? Um, where are you now? And she said the, um, the engagement was a good one. Um, generally, the program was good. The most helpful part for her was obviously the financial support she got to really get the startup and go in. She said the training was practically very instructive because you spoke about the 12 weeks of intense training. I think that was really, um, for some people, they learned quite a bit. But for her, the most, the highlighted part for her was the marketing component and looking at market segmentation and so and I'm um, learning from that, I'm um, leading out to the financial modeling as a, and everything like that. And she also said that um, in terms of her 
engagement over the time period that the one-on-one -on -one with resource persons also assisted because there would be times when some things that you would want to get clarity on, that one-on-one -on -one allowed for more in-depth clarification as opposed to in the classroom setting when you had the Zoom sessions. So for her, that helped. And also, I think there was a WhatsApp group which was established, the pair-to-pair -pair exchanges also assisted in terms of getting some clarification, cross-fertilizing ideas, and also sharing experiences as part of pair learning. So there was that both horizontal learning and also the vertical through the resource persons becoming engaged. And a recommendation she has is that there needs to be continued technical support. And I guess maybe financial too, I don't know, she didn't tell me that part. But I assume there needs to be continued reaching out and seeing, okay, how are you doing, what's happening, what is the issue moving forward. Or maybe as St. Lucia has indicated from Mr. Jabatis, the ministry is obviously waiting and begging for some green pretenders to come through so that, you know, we can probably up the ante in agriculture. So the experience for her was good. And for me also, it allowed me to spend some time rethinking into agriculture because I have been more engaged in sports over the last. So let me just allow me to segue into sports, if you, if you may, for two seconds. And to say that from a GGGI perspective, Mr. Smith, I think we, <laughs> we need to look at sports as a business. And so I have left the mentorship, if you don't mind. Is that OK? <laughs> and I'm doing some advocacy now and some marketing in terms of sports, particularly netball, if I could say so as well, that we need to begin to look at how sports can become a platform for greening. And actually, from a netball perspective, last year we did some of that with our young persons. And we're also going to be hosting a similar tournament in St. Lucia in April, where we got them into understanding the whole issue of greening and what can be done, and encouraging them when they go back home to develop advocacy groups within their own domains, as far as waste management, water harvesting, just what you eat as well, nutrition-wise, is important, what we eat. Um, I see some of our, our players coming to training, and the nutrition is not what will help you to really get out of yourself your best potential. So there is some level of green to be done at various levels. So I'm just making a pitch that we need to look at sports as an area of engagement, and I probably will engage with Flora and Mr. Smith some other time as far as how we can really engage in terms of becoming more green in sports and how sports of itself is a very good platform for really populating or really popularizing the whole aspect of a green, a green economy in our various countries, not just St. Lucia, but also the region as a whole. So having said that, I want to say thanks for having me and it was a pleasure. Thank you so much, um, Mrs. Rufina Paul. And of course, it gives me immense joy to introduce the next speaker, who is one of my mentees as well. So put your hands together for Ms. Rhonda St. Hill Blanchard. Good afternoon, all protocols already been established. It is a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I would like to take this opportunity to thank GGGI and the team for the invaluable techniques, processes, experience that has been impacted on Regal Farms. Sorry. I am grateful for all the tireless nights the numerous com assignments that we had to complete, and working with my mentors and my coach who are here today, and they working with me tirelessly during the night to ensure that assignments are, are completed, that I meet all the requirements. Connections established with my colleagues, I am utterly grateful for. I came into the program 
knowing business and accounting, which is my field. However, social link canvas, I knew nothing about. And I must say, this has been wonderfully done and uh, everything because I can walk into the bank now and show them I have, I am ready for business. I have everything that I need, you know, to let's talk. So they were actually surprised when I had all my documents ready. I came with my theory of change. <laughs> I came in with everything. <laughs> so the institutions were really happy that I was, I actually had those documents with, with me because they're saying, you know, this is the first time somebody's actually so prepared, you know. So thank you for that. I have some hope that my business journey is on the right path to being successful, sustainable, and adaptive to change. I was a proud recipient of the 10,000, US $10,000 grant. And with this, I assisted the Duga Primary and I have completed my shaded greenhouse, which hopefully I will be getting my bags so that my grow bags of mushrooms so that I can start production. <clears throat> so once again, I would like to thank you for the opportunity afforded and the invaluable journey and becoming a greenpreneur. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Blanchard. And so we're making some slight changes. We're calling on Ms. Kelly James, a mentor, to give the vote of thanks. Put your hands together for Ms. James. Pleasant evening, everyone. My name is Kelly James. I was one of the mentors on the GGI. I just want to say um, this evening that I feel very honored. It's a privilege to get the opportunity from the GGI to present to you today. And I just want to say thank you so very much for this special occasion. I would like to also thank all the honors and the delegates who is here today in this room. Each and everyone looking very lovely today. <laughs> I will say so thank you so very much and I also want to thank the program advisor the committee the member and also each and every speaker that are here today I just want to say today is a very splendorous day and it's my pleasure to say thank you to each and every one I do hope each and every one of us will enjoy this evening and we will get home safely thank you so very much Thank you very much. And let me just briefly say that there's, through the networking in the region, um, the Caribbean Center for Excellent for Sustainable Livelihoods, Corsell, my colleague, Ms. Marcia Brandon, just sent me this earlier on, is offering a maximum of 15 fully funded scholarships to Caribbean MSMEs and their team members to attend an ILO certified course in greening my enterprise. For enterprises, entrepreneurs with differentiated value who adopt a green economy and growth model to position themselves in the market with a triple impact on society, the economy, and the environment. So we'll be sharing that as well, and you'll be getting that information. So a lot is happening. So let me call on Mr. Dinesh Daswani at GGI Communications to wrap up the proceedings. Put your hands together. Thank you, Speaker. Oh, sorry, Mr. Alexander. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> I like to adopt protocol that's already been established. Yes, sir. <laughs> so we're here at the conclusion of the inaugural Green Pinners Week. Of course, the impending inclusion of phase one of the Eastern Caribbean Green Entrepreneurship Initiative. This marks the pinnacle of a remarkable journey that has profoundly influenced sustainable development and innovation in our region. Over the past three years, generously supported by the Qatar Fund for Development, this initiative has empowered numerous individuals, many of them here today, businesses and communities to embrace green entrepreneurship as a powerful force for positive change. As we bid farewell to this chapter, our heartfelt appreciation goes out to all the participants, the stakeholders, the mentors, 
the governments, the coaches, the facilitators, the, and the dedicated team whose unwavering commitment and collaborative efforts have propelled this initiative to a resounding success. A special acknowledgement is owed to the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, not only for the exceptional partnership, but for also the new role beyond this phase, being the focal point ensuring that the continuity of green entrepreneurship grows in our region. I'd like to extend gratitude, like Laura did, to Janice Henderson, whose leadership in us as a facilitator in the last two years has inspired many green pinners inside here as well to strive for greatness. A heartfelt thank you to Daria Poyots, our former admin finance and procurement senior associate for a steadfast dedication to the program. A mention of Melody Nixon, who has taken over the, the role of admin finance and procurement for this program. I know you just joined the program recently, but you've done so much so already for the program, so that's good. Thank you. Our gratitude extends to the business support units. I think Laura mentioned that as well, spanning the Eastern Caribbean. The Antigua and Barbados Investment Authority, the Dominica Export and Import Agency, the Small Business Development Center in St. Kitts, and the Center for Enterprise Development in St. Vincent. Reserve a special appreciation for Boost St. Lucia, which was part of Invest St. Lucia, and for Grenada Investment Development Corporation for the invaluable contributions during the program in its inaugural year. A heartfelt thank you goes out to Kimalin Regis and her team in Grenada, as well as Ricky Alexander in St. Lucia for their recent contributions, which has significantly enriched our endeavors. To every single green pinner, coach, and mentor who has participated, your dedication, your creativity, and your passion has been the driving force behind this initiative. We are proudly grateful for your willingness to embrace the challenges and the opportunities for green entrepreneurship. Stephanie Matthew, our monitoring, evaluation, and learning associate, deserves recognition for ensuring our impacts were timely and effective. Dr. Kristen Deason, our former country representative, and Daniel Munoz-Smith, our current Caribbean representative, have provided invaluable guidance throughout this journey. Kwesi Roberts and Pearl Joseph from the OECS Competitive Business Unit have been steadfast supporters of an unwavering assistance for every single stage in our journey. We must acknowledge our counterparts in the GGI Pacific office, whose collaboration and contributions have been instrumental and effective. And finally, finally, a heartfelt thank you and tribute to Ms. Laura John the heartbeat of the initiative. Without her tireless dedication over the past three years, we wouldn't have witnessed the remarkable outcomes the program has achieved today. Together, we have received over 400 applications, awarded 57 grantees, supported over 80 green businesses, created over 150 jobs, and still counting. Notably, 63% of those participants were women, 40% were youth. We injected 1.2 million US dollars, equivalent to an estimated of 3.2 million EC dollars into the green entrepreneurship ecosystem in the region, paving the way for crucial expansions, job creations, and economic success. This formal program is concluding. However, the legacy of innovation, and I word again innovation, <laughs> resilience, and sustainable development has fostered in, to endure shaping a brighter and more prosperous future for the Eastern Caribbean region and beyond. And that, I thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we conclude. Let me just do, make some apologies um, for our showcase. One of our participants was stuck in the bad little. She was coming from thing with the goods and thing to showcase. Uh, my mentee, her uh, signs and stuff, uh, Axel Finance, it was not ready yet, and we had some, some a few little things like that as well. So we apologize for that, but part of the challenges in terms of navigating that, that, that as well. So we close the program with the Eco Creations, a little fashion to change the thing. Let me welcome Eco Creations. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everyone. 
Um, my name is Donna Hyacinth, and I'm the founder of Eco Creations. And Eco Creations, we collect unwanted clothing, and we upcycle that into simple and unique outfits. So I'm here with my colleague today, Kishan Butcher, who is a creative designer, and she's also the founder of Creations. Well, that's her own business. <laughs> uh, we came together. We decided to come together to create a collection for an upcycle collection for Caribbean Fashion Week. So we are here today to show you guys six looks that we designed for Caribbean Fashion Week. So this design, this collection was inspired by the hustle and bustle and energy of the city. So we created this collection from cargo and denim pants, just pants. So in our area of green designing, we were able to make our designs sexy. Unlike agriculture, we know <laughs> agriculture cannot be sexy. <laughs> so we were able to make it sexy. So very first, we have two beautiful models very first today to showcase to you guys six of our collections. Thank you.